what are the parts of the brain and their functions? Today, we're going to explore the various parts of the brain and what all they do on Today with Joe Knows Brains. I'm Joe Lamb, personal injury attorney in Clearwater, Florida. I handle a ton of auto accident cases and bicycle accident cases for brain injury victims and just like speaking about these topics. Today, we're going to talk about um, the parts of the brain and their functions. Really, when it breaks it down, there's more parts of the brain that I have time for in this video. So I'm going to limit it to just the larger um, encompassing areas of the brain. And when, when you look at it from a, a 3,000 feet above, those six main parts of the brain. Um, starting at the bottom, you have the brain stem. Then up to the cerebellum. In the back, you have the occipital lobe, the parietal lobe, frontal lobe, and temporal lobe. We're going to go through these uh, slowly one at a time. And there's no test at the end, so don't worry too, too much. Um, the first part I'm going to talk about is, is the part that makes us most human. And that's going to be the frontal lobe. Um, the frontal lobe is in both hemispheres of the brain. I guess I'll go back and get even more high up. Um, the brain has two main, what's known as hemispheres. Uh, some people may say they're left-brained or right-brained. And what they mean is, is that the brain split in half right around here. It's connected by a piece known as the corpus callosum. And on either side of the brain, fundamentally, people tend to associate these halves of the brain with one type of personality or another. Generally speaking, people consider that those who are more logical and, and math-oriented are left brain folk, and those who are more creative and maybe able to have uh, creative writing ideas and, and more uh, action-oriented tend to be right brain. Now, research lately has come out to say that that may or may not be true, um, but I'll save that for a different video. So that's the two hemispheres of the brain. So going back to the frontal lobe, the frontal lobe is the part, really the biggest part of the brain. It's all right here and it covers both hemispheres. And what that means is that it's, it's occupied in various functions. In fact, um, a lot of people refer to uh, the frontal lobe as the home of the personality because it's what makes us human having a large frontal lobe and it controls things like personality and behavioral changes. Um, it creates, it's what helps us make fine motor movements. So like picking up this, uh, this little box here, things along those lines, our hands, those fine motor functions, that's the frontal lobe. Um, it's, it's part of our judgment. Um, it, it, it controls our expression of emotions, problem solving, memories here, judgment. Uh, it even has our sense of smell. Um, it, interesting side note, um, there's some research out there that says that the sense of smell is in the front part of the brain and the frontal lobe because for every other animal besides humans, it's such a critical part of how they identify their environment around them. Um, but of course, we as humans tend to rely more on sight than smell, even though, man, I'm getting a lot of video ideas today. Uh, a lot of evidence is coming out saying that smell may play a much bigger role in how we perceive our environments than, than we always, always thought. Um, in addition, um, kind of relating to what I do, the frontal lobe is the most common place for brain injuries to occur, especially in um, kind of what we've talked about in the past, the coup contra coup or a blunt force impact, because unfortunately, right here, you smash your head this way, it's what hits the wall. Um, and, and the issues that can come out of that loss of smell, um, really significant emotional change, that's probably what's most commonly associated with the frontal lobe injury, as well as some more serious ones can be lack of fine motor function at all, uh, memory loss, and then mood swings and impulsive acts. This is a pretty common thing that I see in clients, um, and it always breaks our hearts here at uh, Jim Dodds and Law because it's it's just um, such a fascinating way that um, sorry, it's just fascinating what it can do to people, and, and sometimes it's absolutely heartbreaking. And thank you, Katie. Absolutely, um, you know. Like I said, it's kind of fun. It's a little bit like astrology, uh, both sides of the brain, left, right. A lot of people take tests. Everyone wants to be whole brained. Um, here's a surprise, everyone. You all use 100% of your brain, no matter left or right brain you may be. Um, so that's kind of the frontal lobe. It's really the core of our personality. It's just what makes us human. It's what makes us able to make these um, advanced decisions. But let me, let me talk to you right now. Um, speaking of, switching to the second lobe that we're going to talk about today is the parietal lobe. So the frontal lobe is about here. Parietal lobe is kind of around here. Doctors watching this, please do not quote me on my specific areas of the skull. So the parietal lobe, it's involved in comprehension. Uh, what it, it's famous for is integrating 
the other elements of the brain. So it integrates, for example, like visual cues, language cues, reading, sensation. It takes these inputs and it helps you navigate them. For example, if you ever tried to close your eyes and walk through a room, your parietal lobe is working overtime as it's trying to remember what's there, associate locations within. Even if your eyes are open, it's going, okay, there's a ch table right there, there's a chair. How do I avoid these? All of these are parietal lobe functions. And brain or injuries to the parietal lobe can, can really result in, in difficulty paying attention. And in, in, and in a lot of people, they'll say, well, I paid attention, but I just, it doesn't, I guess the best way to say is in one ear, out the other. Very common expression. And it's kind of what a parietal lobe injury looks like. They may be able to pay attention, but it just doesn't seem to click. Um, some of us have people we know that may have no parietal lobe injury at all and still act that way. No promises for those people. Um, turning to the, um, the temporal lobe and also the parietal lobe, uh, fascinating thing is it's very much associated with the effect of multitasking. It's what lets us walk and talk at the same time, things like that. Um, unfortunately, you know, it doesn't help us. <laughs> it doesn't help us get more work done than we'd like to. Um, switching to the temporal lobe, um, this is really another processing area. And the temporal lobe is, uh, it's hard to put, but it's underneath the frontal lobe kind of like right in this area, but if you do a cross section right there. And the temporal lobe, long-term memory formation, processing speech, vision, smell, and sound. And, and really what this is, is if you've ever been in a room full of people and you're trying to make sense of, uh, you know, just the one person talking to you and you wonder, why can I hear him in the room so loud? That's what the temporal lobe is doing. And related to that, uh, image, injuries to the temporal lobe can lead to uh, trouble comprehending language and obsessive behavior because it's just what helps us filter through the noise, essentially. Uh, then we switch to the, the occipital lobe. And the occipital lobe, weirdly, is heavily associated with the eyes, but yet it is in the back of our brain. Um, it's, this is really, it's, this is how critical vision and, and light um, impressions is. Sorry. I was trying to be fancy, but, but vision is essentially just light going through the eyes and being processed by the brain. And this is what's doing the majority of the heavy lifting for that one. Um, and, and loss in this area can, can really damage uh, your ability to see, the ability to read, things along those lines. Um, it, and in severe cases, it has been shown to, to lead to blindness, even in eyes that are perfectly well functioning, which makes sense because it's the, the center of the brain that's translating all the images that are coming from the eyes and turning it into something that we're able to associate. Kind of a little tangential, um, the occipital lobe is, is so wonderful for a couple different reasons. For starters, you ever think about the fact that if you close one eye, it's very hard to use three dimensions in, in, for your vision and for like catching a football, for example. Um, that's because both of your eyes and the occipital lobe work together to create a 3D image out of the 2D field of view that you have. Another really interesting thing that applies to me personally, I had LASIK last year and, and after LASIK, it's very a, a common, relatively common complication is what's known as rainbow vision. So for some time, um, I was seeing rainbows around every single light that I looked at. And over the course of about a year after that surgery, it started going away. Now, nothing changed about my actual eyes. What it was, was the occipital lobe in the brain was learning how to take the new input that it was receiving, which was slightly different, and turn it back into the picture that it's supposed to be. Get rid of those rainbows. And today, I don't see them at all. Just thought that would be uh, kind of interesting to know about. The next step is the, uh, or the next part of the brain is the cerebellum. This is referred to a lot when people think about the brain. The cerebellum is here in the bottom back of the brain, just underneath the occipital and temporal lobe. It's also referred to as the little brain because it's it kind of controls a lot of uh, essential motor functions like balance and coordination. The reason it's called the little brain is is um, it's kind of primitive. It's more it's considered one of the earlier parts of the brain formed if you look at it from a chronological perspective, not in terms of the actual. I think actually in terms of development of the person too, it's one of the first parts of the brain to form. But basically, it it and the next part I'm going to talk about, which is the brain stem. These are our primitive brain functions. These are the things that keep us alive day to day. So for example, the cerebellum is what lets me stand up out of a chair or, or walk without falling over. These things, this is such a critical part of our, our center. Um, in fact, cerebellum injuries are, are relatively common in my practice 
And, and the most common way to diagnose these is loss of balance. And, and unfortunately for many people, this loss of balance or vertigo that can be associated with this, it doesn't, it doesn't ever seem to go away. Um, it's really heartbreaking um, because unfortunately the cerebellum, it's, it's a lot of the other parts of the brain can be reproduced in other parts of the brain. For example, damage to the frontal lobe will cause other areas of the brain to try and fill in the gaps a little bit. Unfortunately for the cerebellum, this is simply just not as true as the other areas. Um, and finally, turning to the brain stem, um, this is right. When you think of the brain stem, you're thinking if the brain was a object and your spinal cord was an object or heck think like children's toys the brain's a big circle the big rod brain stem connects the two and the brain stem has some special function separate from what the spinal cord itself does really the brain stem is uh, let's put it like this you got an injury to the brain stem that's the type of brain injury that you're probably not coming out of that's a coma that's a really terrible brain injury because the brain stem controls your breathing your heart rate all sorts of uh subconscious activities that without which we would we wouldn't keep living it controls your digestion um uh, it controls basically every blood circulation pretty much every autonomous function you know i don't know about you but i can't consciously tell my heart to beat and i'm very glad that i don't because i'm a forgetful person and so thankfully my brain stem continues to on rhythm click 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 beat that heart um so that's what keeps us um functioning some, some other symptoms of an injury to the brainstem, breathing problems, abnormal heart rate, uh, insensitivity to pain and other sensations, and, and unfortunately, in severe cases, vegetative state or death. Um, so, you know, it, it's a very serious, serious injury to have a brainstem injury because it's just such a critical component on the base level of, of our survivability as, um, as human beings. So all of this information, I realized it was a lot, so I'll quickly come back over it. Um, you start with the frontal lobe in, in the front, um, and it's the center of our personality. It's what makes us human beings. Then you go back one, you have the parietal lobe, comprehension. It's, it weaves things together. The temporal lobe is what uh, creates your long-term memory. Occipital lobe is in the back opposite of the eyes. It's vision, uh, cerebellum, baby brain, balance, coordination. And then finally, spinal cord, breathing, and, and existing, really. Uh, in fact, if you'd ever want to look at this, because I understand it's a little bit hard to picture it, you can always Google it, but one of the best results you'd find is going to be in our um, Layman's Guide to Brain Injuries, where we have a real nice, lovely photograph. Um, and you can get a copy of it from the link below. We've got a real nice, lovely photograph of it that shows, here, I'll even show it to you, um, shows what parts of the brain are which and what damage to the brain will cause. Um, and the, I did not rip this page out of the book. I printed it separate. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. As I mentioned earlier, a free copy of the brain injury guide is going to be in the, uh, I think in the link to this, if not, it's right here. People who are better at Facebook than me will figure that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know and, uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you.